In this review, we will learn what a buffer solution is and how it works. We will derive and use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, learn how to make a buffer solution, and finally, we will examine the problem-solving strategy to calculate final pH after an acid or base has been added to a buffer solution. Buffer solutions can be made to virtually any pH. For an acidic buffer solution, a weak acid and the salt of its conjugate base are employed. For example, acetic acid and sodium acetate. The given Ka value for acetic acid indicates it is a weak acid, and we will most likely be given a volume and molarity of the weak acid within some problem. In this example, the conjugate base is delivered via sodium acetate, which is an ionic compound or salt. We do not have to include the sodium ion within the equilibrium because it is the conjugate acid of a strong base and by definition is stable, low in energy, and unreactive. Often your professor will simply refer to this cation as a weak conjugate acid or spectator ion. So typically the appropriate grams of sodium acetate are weighed, which allows us to know the number of moles and ultimately the molarity of the acetate ion. We now have a completely described acidic buffer solution, molarity of both components, and a volume of buffered solution. A basic buffer solution is made with a weak base and the salt of its conjugate acid. For example, ethylamine and ethylamine hydrochloride. Ethylamine is a weak base as indicated by the small Kb value, and we will most likely be given a volume and molarity of the weak base within some problem. In this example, the conjugate acid is delivered via ethylamine hydrochloride, which is an ionic compound or salt. We do not have to include the chloride ion in our equilibrium because it is the conjugate base of a strong acid, and by definition is stable, low in energy, and unreactive. Often your professor will simply refer to this anion as a weak conjugate base, or simply a spectator ion. So typically the appropriate grams of ethylamine hydrochloride are weighed which allows us to know the number of moles and ultimately the molarity of the protonated ethylamine. We now have a completely described basic buffer solution, molarity of both components and a volume of buffered solution. To help us better understand how a buffer solution resists change in pH when either a base or acid is added, let's add some base to the acidic buffer solution shown and some base to pure water and see how these two solutions react when the same amount of base is added to each. In other words, how will the pH change for these two solutions, one buffered and one not? First, the initial pH of this buffer solution is calculated in the usual manner by looking at equilibrium concentrations, setting up the equilibrium expression, simplifying the numerator and denominator due to the 5% rule, which of course simplifies the math, and solving for x, the proton concentration. Finally, the initial pH of this acidic buffer solution is afforded. Now let's add 0.2 grams of sodium hydroxide as our base, which is equivalent to 5 millimoles of sodium hydroxide, or 5 millimoles of hydroxide ions. Converting our initial amounts of both weak acid and conjugate base to millimoles allows us to examine the pre-equilibrium stoichiometric calculation the 5 millimoles of hydroxide will neutralize 5 millimoles of weak acid, which affords 5 additional millimoles of conjugate base. Now the new molarities can be calculated, assuming there is no change in volume after the solid sodium hydroxide was added. The new initial molarities are subjected to our usual problem-solving strategy to afford pH of a solution. First, we write down the change, set up the equilibrium expression, simplify the math via the 5% rule, and solve for x, which is the proton concentration, and finally calculate the resulting pH of the solution. Subtracting the initial pH of the buffer solution from the final pH after 0.2 grams of sodium hydroxide was added demonstrates the buffer solution changed by 0.067 pH units. Now let's compare that change in pH units with the resulting change if the same amount of sodium hydroxide was placed in an unbuffered solution or pure water. Placing the same amount of sodium hydroxide in the same amount of pure water affords a 0.0588 molar solution of sodium hydroxide, 
which is the same concentration of hydroxide ions, which can then be converted to a proton concentration via the KW definition. The proton concentration yields the final pH of the solution. The pure water had an initial pH of 7, which is now subtracted from the final pH after base was added, and we see that the change in pH units is substantial when compared to a buffer solution, which proves our buffer solution resists change in pH when either a base or acid is added. At this point, it is worth our efforts to look closer at our equilibrium expression and derive the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation with the buffered solution shown. Placing the equilibrium concentrations into our equilibrium expression, followed by simplification via the 5% rule, and rearranging for x. Because x is equal to the proton concentration, let's substitute the proton concentration into our expression, followed by another substitution for the Ka value. In addition, let's substitute the conjugate base and weak acid concentrations into our expression. At this point, if we take the log of both sides of the equation, followed by some simplification, we get the very useful Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. To demonstrate just how useful and convenient this equation is, let's compare problem-solving strategies. As previously demonstrated, the pH of this solution can be determined in the usual manner, solving for x, the proton concentration and taking the negative log of the proton concentration. Now let's calculate the pH employing the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Simply placing the given Ka value and initial concentrations of conjugate base and weak acid into the equation affords the same pH answer with much less work. So let's revisit one of our previous calculations to determine final pH after 5 millimoles of base was added to our buffer solution. Not using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation took a fair amount of effort as was previously shown to afford the final pH. Let's keep that work on the screen and now compare the problem-solving strategy employing the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation by simply plugging in the three necessary values, Ka and initial concentrations of conjugate base and weak acid, which is much easier but there is an even simpler way to solve this problem. The new molarities of our conjugate base and weak acid were calculated from new millimoles divided by volume total. Placing these expressions into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, we see that the total volumes cancel and the pH can be easily calculated. But this approach hints at an even simpler approach to using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. One can simply place the millimoles of conjugate base and weak acid after the stoichiometric calculation is completed directly into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Now that we know how a buffer solution works and how to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, let's learn how to make a buffer solution. A typical exercise asked of the student may be as follows. You're given the molarity and volume of weak acid and then asked how many grams of the salt of the conjugate base are required to afford some final pH, which is a pH of 5 in this example. Plugging in three of the four given values, the pH, the Ka, and the concentration of weak acid into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation allows one to calculate what the concentration of conjugate base needs to be to afford a final pH of 5. Recalling our definition of molarity and expanding what moles is equal to, grams over molar mass, allows us to easily calculate the grams of sodium acetate required by substituting molarity and molar mass of sodium acetate within the 85 milliliter solution. Thus, weighing out 9.62 grams of sodium acetate and dissolving it in the 85 milliliters of weak acid solution should give a final pH of 5 for this buffer solution, assuming there is no change in volume. It is worth our efforts to discuss a more generalized approach on how to make a buffer solution. An ideal buffer solution occurs when the concentration of conjugate base and weak acid are equal or nearly equal because the ratio between conjugate base and weak acid is least affected when the ratio is 1 when an acid or base is added to the buffer solution. When this ratio is 1, the log of 1 is 0 
and the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation simplifies to pH equals pKa. Thus, if one had a list of weak acids and their Ka values, and then made an additional column of their pKa values, which is equal to their pH in solution if an equimolar amount of conjugate base is present, one could better choose which weak acid and salt of its conjugate base to choose to create a buffer solution at some necessary pH. For example, if one needs to make a buffer solution close to 3.1, then the weak acid, hydrofluoric acid, and a near equimolar amount of sodium fluoride would be the best choice. Or if one wanted to make a buffer solution at pH 4.9, then propanoic acid and a near equimolar amount of sodium propanoate would be the best choice. Simply decrease or increase the amount of salt to be weighed to fine-tune the ratio for the desired pH, as demonstrated in the previous example problem. We will now summarize the possible calculations that may arise when one adds acid or base to acidic or basic buffered solutions. Remember, an acidic buffered solution is created when a weak acid and the salt of its conjugate base are both in solution, and a basic buffered solution is created when a weak base and the salt of its conjugate acid are both in solution. Thus, you will be asked to calculate final pHs after either acid or base is added to these buffered solutions. In this summary, we will overview the concepts to solve these four types of exercises. So starting with an acidic buffered solution, let's add some base. Typically, we would be given the molarity and volume of both components within the acidic buffered solution, which we'd convert to millimoles. Now, if we're going to add base, it will react with the acidic proton of the weak acid, a neutralization reaction, thereby lowering the concentration of weak acid and increasing the concentration of conjugate base. The added base will happen in one of two ways. Either a solid base like sodium hydroxide is added and there will be no assumed change in the volume, or the base will be delivered via solution of known molarity and quantity. Either way of addition, you need to convert this amount to millimoles. In addition, it is important to realize that the total volume will change if a solution of base is added. The millimoles hydroxide will now neutralize the millimoles of acid to afford an additional amount of millimoles conjugate base, which allows us to calculate millimoles of weak acid remaining and new additional amount of conjugate base. Dividing these millimoles by the new total volume of solution affords final molarities of weak acid and conjugate base that can be substituted into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to give the final pH of solution. Previously in this review, we learned a nice shortcut, which was to plug in the millimoles of weak acid and millimoles of conjugate base calculated after neutralization, which will give the same answer. These types of shortcuts will not be discussed here. Now let's examine how the pH changes when an acid is added to an acidic buffered solution. Again, we would be given the molarity and volume of both components within the acidic buffered solution, which we convert to millimoles. Now, if we're going to add acid, this will happen in one of two ways. An acid will be bubbled into the solution, which will assume no change in total volume, or more likely the acid will be delivered via solution of known molarity and volume. Either way of addition, you need to convert this amount to millimoles. The added acid will react with the conjugate base, lowering the concentration of conjugate base and increasing the concentration of weak acid within the equilibrium. How many millimoles of conjugate base reacted, or removed, is the same as millimoles of added protons. Thus, subtracting millimoles of added protons and adding that same amount to the weak acid yields our remaining millimoles of conjugate base and new amount of millimoles weak acid. These quantities of millimoles are easily converted to molarities by dividing by the new total volume and are then placed into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to afford the final pH after acid has been added to an acidic buffered solution. Now let's examine a basic buffered solution and add some acid to it. First we should calculate the millimoles of weak base and conjugate acid from the given molarities and quantity of the solution. If we are going to add acid to this basic buffered solution, we should add it on the reactant side of the equation 
because any added protons will react with the weak base. Again, this added acid could be bubbled into the solution, which will cause no volume change. However, it is more likely that the acid is delivered via a solution of known molarity and volumes, which can be converted to millimoles acid. Either way of addition, you need to convert this amount to millimoles. The millimoles added will cause a decrease in concentration of the weak base and an increase in the concentration of conjugate acid. Thus, we subtract the appropriate amount of weak base, which is the same as millimoles of acid added, and add that same amount to the millimoles of conjugate acid. Dividing by the new total volume then gives the new molarities for both components of the basic buffered solution, which are then placed into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. But the Ka is required within the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Thus, the given Kb for the weak base must be converted to a Ka by rearranging the Kw expression as shown and solving for Ka. Substituting the Ka value into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation then allows the final pH to be calculated. Now let's add some base to our basic buffered solution. As we have already demonstrated, we need to first convert the given molarities and quantity of basic buffered solution to millimoles. Now the base can either be added in the form of some solid base, such as sodium hydroxide, which will assume no change in the total volume of the solution, or the base can be added via a solution of known molarity and quantity. Either way, you need to convert this amount to millimoles. The added base will react with the proton of the conjugate acid in a neutralization reaction, causing the concentration of conjugate acid to lower and the concentration of weak base to increase. Thus, we subtract the millimoles of base added from the conjugate acid to obtain the remaining millimoles of conjugate acid and add that same amount to the millimoles of weak base. Dividing by new total volume affords the new molarities of weak base and conjugate acid which are then placed into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Again, we need the Ka value within the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Thus, the given Kb for the weak base must be converted to a Ka by rearranging the Kw expression as shown and solving for Ka. Substituting the Ka value into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation then allows the final pH to be calculated.